I am Dr. Brent Larson. Welcome to the video. We're talking about the most common types of hypothyroid problems or some of the things leading to why people get hypothyroid. Again, just to remind you, hypothyroid is a low thyroid state. So people have weight gain, they have chronic fatigue, they feel cold all the time, brain fog, depression, these types of symptoms, even GI symptoms. The first one here. Functional hypothyroidism from weakened adrenal glands due to prolonged stress. Now, who doesn't have prolonged stress in our, in our society? I used, to have, I used to have equipment in my office that measured with a 98.5% accuracy stress on the body. It measured brain waves. It measured heart rate variability. It measured skin conductance or how sweaty your hands get, hand temperature. All of these are measurements of stress. And it did that in the course of a 15-minute computerized test. Now, what I found was that everybody, no matter what they told me, they may have said, Doc, I have no stress. I, my kids are gone. I'm retired. My demands are down. I feel fantastic. But you look at their scans. You look at what's really happening in their central nervous system, and their body was under tremendous amounts of stress. When we do saliva tests, blood tests, and whatnot, the labs that we have these run through, they tell us 80% of the population is adrenal exhausted. So you're, basically when you come to me, you're adrenal exhausted until proven otherwise. Because the vast majority of people that we see are completely, have, have completely weakened adrenals. Now why are the adrenals so important? And it has to do with your thyroid and the adrenals. So consider your thyroid like your car in park. It's idling. Right? It's not using up much energy, so your RPMs are low in the engine. Now, when you put that car into drive and you engage that transmission, you step on the gas and you start moving, now you activate more energy. The pistons are moving more, the, uh, you're using up more gasoline, more air is coming in. You're using up more of everything, more demands on that engine. Same thing happens in your body. When you start going and start doing things, right, walking, talking, singing, dancing, jumping, running, all these things, you have your car, so to say, in drive. And what, what does that is your adrenal gland. So if your baseline, if your thyroid is weakened, your body won't want to let you put, put your, your, yourself in gear. So your adrenals will be weakened, vice versa as well. If your adrenals are weakened, your body is going to tone down your, your thyroid. So you'll have functional hypothyroidism because you have weakened adrenals. That's how the whole system works. Now number two, functional hypothyroidism uh, caused by estrogen dominance. This is rampant as well. So the urine tests that we do, the other types of testing show that estrogens are very, very high because we have a very estrogenic society. We have xenohormones and we have different compounds that we're exposed to that are creating more estrogen, estrogen mimickers in the body. So estrogen is going high and that causes functional hypothyroidism as well. Number three, nutrient deficiencies required for normal thyroid hormone synthesis, release and function. So like everything in the body, you have to have nutrients and we flat out do not get the required nutrients that we need anymore. Yes, you know, maybe 50, 100 years ago, our soils were very robust. We had lower stress, maybe less toxins, electromagnetic pollution wasn't here constantly. You're probably watching this um, on an iPhone or a computer or something, exposed to that electromagnetic radiation. That's a stressor. So the more stressors you have, the more nutrients your body needs. The more you put your car in drive or your body in drive, the more nutrients your body needs. And unfortunately, the food that we have today is very much running on fumes. That's a whole topic for a different video. Number four, cell inflammation. This one is key. This one is so key. We actually measure cell inflammation with a simple test in the office. Now, cell membranes are not able to bind thyroid hormones appropriately. That's what that means. So you have, let's say, 50 trillion cells in your body. You have trillions of cells. Every single cell, the circle of that cell, the outside of that cell has a cell membrane. And that membrane is a double layer of fat. And it has 
thousands of receptors on the outside and it's binding hormones, it's binding nutrients, it's binding proteins and enzymes and different things. It's truly the brain of the cell. Now, if you have cell inflammation from various sources, toxins is probably the biggest one. Uh, if your blood sugar is constantly up and down and out of control, if you're eating six meals a day and following that plan, you're spiking blood sugar all the time, eating bad fats, eating grains, these types of things create cell inflammation. Now again, this is inflammation in every single cell in the body. It's not a sore shoulder or a bum knee or a you know, sore low back. We're talking about every single cell in the body being inflamed. And when this happens, these hormones can't bind very well. And you need those hormones to go into the cell and tell the DNA and tell the mitochondria, which make energy in the cell, tell them what to do. So if you have cell inflammation, which we find that the vast majority of people do to some degree, if you have that, even if you have thyroid hormones in your bloodstream, even if all of that is correct, if you have the inflammation at the cell membrane site, that hormone can't get into the cell very efficiently and it can't do its job. Number five, thyroid disease, primary hypothyroidism. So this, this is actually a thyroid disease state. Um, thyroid hormones are usually prescribed for this case. So this is where a medication um, actually is a pretty good idea. So 5B, for successful treatment though of this, the first four problems that we mentioned need to be addressed. You can't just ignore them. You can't ignore your nutrient deficiencies. You can't ignore toxicity and, and cell inflammation problems. You can't ignore your estrogen dominance. You can't ignore your weakened adrenals. You have to do all those things as well, even if you have this scenario where you're taking thyroid medication. It's not that easy of just pop this pill and I'm good. You have to look much, much deeper than that. Um, this is from the PDR, the Physician's Desk Reference. Now, one of the most common uh, medications that we see people that are on, they're on Synthroid, which is a synthetic T4 thyroid hormone. So T4 is the, is the inactive version. Again, whole different video. Um, but here's what it says under the contraindications section of the PDR. It says, Synthroid is also contraindicated in patients with uncorrected adrenal insufficiency. That's the key right there. As thyroid hormones increase tissue demands for adrenal cortical hormones and thereby precipitate acute adrenal crisis. So it's contraindicated with people with adrenal insufficiency. I have not met one single person in my office yet who has had strong, robust, perfectly healthy adrenals. Everyone is either severely fatigued or exhausted. Their, their adrenal glands, whether they feel good, happy, whatever, have energy or not, their adrenals are severely compromised. Now this is under the precaution section of that PDR as well. So it says use of Synthroid uh, in patients with concomitant diabetes mellitus, di diabetes insipidus, or adrenal cortical insufficiency again, may aggravate the intensity of their symptoms. So again, it goes back to number one. You need to look at weakened adrenals. You need to figure that out. And again, that's more videos on adrenal uh, fatigue, adrenal insufficiency. But if you want answers, real thyroid answers, go to realthyroidanswers.com. I will have more information there for you. We, I have videos, I have free reports, I have different things that you can sign up for and get, and I'll deliver it right to your email inbox. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Brant Larson, and I'll see you over there.